about a month before CES was set to kick off, I received a big box in the mail from Corsair, and inside it were a bunch of products that they told me I unfortunately couldn't show you yet. Well, of course, it pained me to not even post anything about them on social media. It actually was kind of a blessing in disguise. The time that I've had with this keyboard and these three mice has allowed me to use each of them in real world scenarios for about a week or so at a time without feeling the pressure to publish before now. That length of exposure to a product is not often afforded a reviewer before we have to put pen to paper, or I suppose finger to keyboard if we're being realistic. Having used each of these for a significant period, I feel that I am ready to render a verdict on them and let you know right now. We're here on the street asking people, would you prefer the car on the right or the car on the left, which comes with a Meshfi S2? Dude, what's even going on here? The, the Lamborghini. There you go, people prefer the Meshfi S2. While Brian's performance may be a bucket of fail, the new Meshfi S2 is performance driven. Visit our website to learn more. Let's do the keyboard first, since technically it's the product that has been released for the longest period of time. Corsair actually didn't hype the K70 RGB Mark II low profile keyboard much when it was released. It was kind of a quiet launch. I asked them why, and there was really no specific reason for it. It's not like they feel it's a bad product. It's just that CES was rapidly approaching and Corsair wouldn't be showing this there. So they just kind of put it up for sale and let it be. For those of you who've watched a few videos on this channel, you might know that my daily driver keyboard of choice is actually the K70 Mark II SE, a white and aluminum model with Cherry MX speed switches. So this form factor actually felt really familiar to me. The low profile version occupies the same footprint and has the same 104 key layout. While there are no macro switches on board, I actually prefer it this way as I don't play any games that need a series of key bindings, and my Adobe Premiere macros are handled by my Elgato Stream Deck. As the name implies, the differences here are in the height and positioning of the keyboard keys themselves. The standard K70 is 40 millimeters tall, while the Low Pro is 29 millimeters tall. Corsair says that this allows you to bring your palms closer to parallel with your desk, which is a more natural position if you're sitting with proper posture, which I hardly ever do. While this may be true, to be honest, I felt a little weird about typing on a totally flat keyboard, and I prefer a little tilt action, but maybe that's just what I've become accustomed to. The biggest amount of cool points that the low profile K70 scores is with the inclusion of cherry low profile red or speed switches. You'll notice that the keycaps are different, and that's because these switches themselves don't just have a short travel distance, but they're physically much smaller. By comparison, the low profile reds have a 1.2 millimeter actuation distance and 3.2 millimeter total travel versus two and four millimeters for the normal cherry reds. The low profile speeds are even shallower. This helps not only with quicker actions during gaming, but also less finger and hand fatigue while typing. Although generally I don't experience this, in my week or so of usage, I definitely noticed a difference between the feel of this keyboard versus my standard K70. It took a bit to get used to because I was kind of badly bottoming out the keystrokes at first, but once you adjust to the shorter travel distance, the keyboard becomes really nice to type on. Here's a quick sound capture versus Cherry Reds. The height difference and key feel is really all that distinguishes this guy from the K70 Mark II. You still get our handy volume roller and mute switch, USB pass through on the back, dedicated media keys, and per key RGB backlighting controllable through Corsair IQ. As such, I didn't have much to complain about here at all. The K70 is already my favorite keyboard, and while I won't be switching to this low profile version permanently, Using it for a week or so was a painless transition and felt really familiar after a short time. The low profile switches are interesting 
and you'll have to decide if you like the feel of them because that's ultimately what will drive your purchase decision here. Next up are three mice that we saw at CES, the M65 RGB Elite, the Iron Claw RGB, and the Harpoon RGB Wireless. Let's start with what's supposed to be the first person shooter flagship, the M65 RGB Elite. This is based on the existing M65 Pro, but makes some significant technological upgrades. The size and shape is basically the same, and it retains its predecessor's all aluminum frame, albeit this time with a raw metal look and feel to it. You can get the M65 in either this matte black soft touch finish or in a glossy white, which I saw at CES and unfortunately looked a little tacky. However, I can see how a soft touch white surface might get really, really grimy really fast. So it's understandable that they switched up in the material for that color specifically. The forward and back buttons have been significantly enlarged to make them easier to find and press. And the sniper button has been slightly repositioned to abut them. This is designed for claw grippers. And as I am not one of those people, I did have some issues with the button placement and contouring. I didn't find the M65 to be particularly comfortable, but as with many peripherals, your mileage may vary. If you have a different grip than I do, or maybe even just slightly smaller hands, you might find the M65 to be perfect. Now, just because it wasn't the most comfortable mouse didn't mean that it wasn't functionally excellent. The new 18,000 DPI sensor is micro adjustable down to one DPI increments, and the Omron switches feel great and are rated for up to 50 million clicks, or one visit to Tweaktown if you don't have an ad blocker enabled. The bottom of the mouse features an adjustable weighting system that also allows you to change the mouse's center of gravity by removing certain weights. The RGB lighting is configurable in two different zones, although to be honest, I don't really care very much about lighting on a mouse most of the time because your hand just covers it up. My favorite peripheral that Corsair sent over was actually this one, the Iron Claw RGB. I'm not entirely sure why they call it Iron Claw as this is specifically designed for palm grippers. Although I suppose calling it Iron Palm wouldn't have sounded as cool and Game of Thronesy. You get the same 18,000 DPI sensor and same Omeron switches here as on the M65, but only one lighting zone, no adjustable weighting, unfortunately, no sniper button, and you can get it in any color as long as it's black. Yes, the Iron Palm lacks some features, but I found it to be just so comfortable in the hand that I haven't actually switched back to my Steel Series Rival 650 just yet. I'm still using this guy on a daily basis. The contour of the sides, along with the rubberized gripping surfaces and front opening that kind of looks like a car air intake, fit my hand perfectly. And I would highly recommend it, or at least trying it out, to anyone with hands on the larger size. Functionally, it was similarly as great as the M65, it's accurate and precise, and being able to adjust the DPI which, with such razor sharpness means that anyone should be able to get comfortable in both a desktop or a gaming environment with ease. The last mouse here is the poster boy for Corsair's new Slipstream wireless technology, and that's really the selling point of the Harpoon wireless, because this was a mouse that has existed in wired form for a couple of years now. The new wireless variant looks and even smells the same, although there have been some significant improvements under the hood. The sensor and switches have been upgraded and now you get a 10,000 DPI sensor instead of 6,000 and the switches are rated for that same 50 million clicks. It's also slightly more weighty than the original. It's still not my favorite mouse and one that I probably wouldn't use on a daily basis, but I think it's almost a perfect travel size and I've been using the Harpoon RGB at CES for the past few years. The real magic comes with the extended battery life and better wireless connectivity. Slipstream operates on a 2.4 gigahertz wireless band with active switching, meaning that it can find a channel that's less congested and avoid any potential interference. Unfortunately, I don't really have the ability to test that here at the house because I don't have any competing devices. Although it's supposed to come in super handy at LAN parties and other similar situations. When using it, there's no perceivable input lag when using Slipstream. And that's because Corsair has pushed the response time down to sub one milliseconds, 500 microseconds to be exact. 
You will get some increased latency if you switch over from Slipstream to Bluetooth, but you also get extended battery life that way. With Slipstream, Corsair boasts 30 hours with lights on or 45 hours with lights off. In my testing, I didn't quite get those numbers, but it's safe to say that longevity was much more on the side of acceptable versus their previous wireless effort, the dark core. In fact, I didn't mind having to charge the Harpoon once every few days, whereas if I didn't charge the dark core overnight, it would be dead by the morning. Corsair also sent over these big floppy things, a couple of them actually, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention them. They're pretty standard water resistant pads with a stitched anti-fraying edge and a rubberized bottom. They're pretty thick, they feel pretty good. They come in a bunch of sizes, but I don't think you wanna hear me review a mouse pad. That would probably be pretty boring. If you're interested in them, go check them out on the Corsair website. What you probably do wanna hear at this point is that this is the end of the video. Let me know what you think in the comments of the new mice and keyboard from Corsair, and don't forget to get subscribed to the channel. If you're not already, check out the merch store down below. And as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.